So I had the opportunity to speak to Liam Sullivan. Liam Sullivan is an independent musician based in Leeds, who like many of us was looking forward to expanding his opportunities before the pandemic. However, due to the pandemic, many of his opportunities have been limited, leading to him getting a second job. I spoke to Liam to understand how COVID has been affecting him. Here with Liam Sullivan, independent music artist, and I'm just going to start off. Like, how has COVID been for you as a musician and an independent musician at that? Uh, yeah, it's been pretty, pretty tough, actually. It's, um, it's made me have to change a lot of things about my life. So before I was just... Um, I made most of my living just doing covers gigs in, in pubs and that, so obviously that's bit in the dust. I've not done any gigs in like a year now, I guess. Yeah. Um, so I, it, music went from being my full-time job basically to not being. So I've had to get another job, so I've started teaching in, in primary schools and stuff. So it's, um, yeah, it's changed my lifestyle a lot, really. Um, I've, I've been reasonably productive. Uh, in the first lockdown, I was, I was quite productive. I wrote a lot of songs. Um, and I was like collaborating with people that I wouldn't usually like doing remote. Um, so I would record all my parts and send them over to other people. So I was pretty productive and I have been quite productive. But the main thing was not being able to gig anymore. And that that used to be my, my living, really. Yeah, I could imagine. That's probably like the main way like, any independent artist would make a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. And um, for reference, what were some of your favorite places to go when lockdown wasn't a thing? Hmm, some of my places, favorite places to go. Uh, that's a tough one. I do like going to the pub. <laughs> like Who going, doesn't? <laughs> yeah, and I like going to the gym as well. So that's that's one that's another one that's bit in the dust. Again, it was all right in the summer because uh, you could do a lot of exercise outside and stuff, but not so much anymore when, when it's cold. Um, favorite places, and, and again, I like to I like to go and see a lot of live music and stuff. Um, so yeah, that's all that bit in the dust. Fair play. Mm. And um, what instruments did you play? Like, did you play, were you a good, purely a guitar? Did you play the piano? Uh, I started off playing the drums. That's what I played first. I was a, a drummer. So my, my dad taught me to play the drums when I was about 10. And then I was a drummer up all through my teens up to the start of my early 20s. Was always a drummer in bands. Uh, and then I started playing the guitar when I was about 15. Started singing when I was about 16, 17. Uh, and then... When I hit that early 20s, then I, I formed my first band as the singer, and I've never looked back, really. I, I do still enjoy playing drums, uh, but guitar guitar and singing, really. I, I can play the piano reasonably as well, but drumming was my first music love. Um, but now it's all it's singing. It's all about the singing for me now. All right, I get that. So you mentioned about your band, and mm-hmm. I'm just wondering, how does that come about? Because for me, getting people together for a collaborative project just generally seems crazy. So I can't imagine asking like friends, "Hey, do you want to yeah. be in this band with me?" It, it isn't. It can be a nightmare being in a band. And like I say, I was I was in bands before. Before I started my solo, the Liam Sullivan band, I was in lots of other bands and stuff. And it it is difficult. And it's you find that some people are not as motivated, and it's like it, is, it can be difficult to. Because musicians especially can be really a nightmare to organise. Um, but yeah, so my, the band, I'm, my band at the minute is just with friends and stuff. But the reason I started the, the Liam Sullivan project was so that if people weren't motivated or people had other commitments and stuff, it didn't, didn't uh, derail the band, as it were. So I, it's gone through a few lineup changes and stuff, but we were going pretty strong before. We were doing lots of gigs, but obviously can't rehearse, can't do anything at the minute. So... It's all ground to a halt a little bit. Fair play. Um, so musically, where do you think your career would have gone so far if lockdown hadn't been a thing? Where would you have toured somewhere? Would you have performed mm-hmm. at a specific venue? Yeah, we had a lot of we had a couple of gigs at uh, the 360 Club, which is a nice venue in Leeds, and we had a the first my headline gig we had booked in, and I was going to do a nice long hour set. Um, <laughs> so that was that was the main one I was looking forward to. Um, but other than that. I don't know. We, we had a fair few gigs booked in Leeds. I felt like we were just sort of hitting our stride as well. We were getting really tight as a band and we were just starting to do a lot of gigs, but it has uh, flitted out, out a little bit, yeah. Like, I feel like COVID did sap the life out of a lot of things. Yeah. And, yeah. I, can't, and I can't imagine being in the creative industry as well, where there hasn't been a whole lot of uh, government back support, although there's probably yeah. been like a few independent efforts here and there and just generally people trying to share music out. So specifically you mentioned lockdown made you adapt a lot of things about your life like musically how did lockdown make you adapt 
Um, it, it made me have to be more um, motivated to do things myself. Like when I was when the band was going pretty strong, it was like if we were rehearsing every week, there was that sort of extra motivation for me to be writing new material. And because if I go, when I go to the practice, I need to have new things to bring to the band. And you know what I mean? So once the, all the practicing stopped, I had to be really motivated just for myself. You know what I mean? Just to, to be more organized uh, and just, yeah, more, more productive in, in, in one way. I do, I do really miss playing with the band, but like I say, I was, I was being pretty productive and sending it out to other friends who had studios and stuff. And so, uh, yeah, I wrote quite a lot of songs in the first lockdown, but they and they're a different style than they would be if we were playing with the band because the band gets quite rocky, and obviously when you're just writing on your own, it, it's a lot mellower. Yeah, I hear that. So this is a question I probably should have asked earlier, my mistake. Um, so how did you even get started, like musically? So what started you down the path of choosing an independent to be an independent musician? Yeah, uh, well, so like I said, my so my dad, uh, my dad was always in bands when he was younger. And I never knew he would he could play the drums. And one day he just brought a drum kit home and uh, played the drums. And I felt I was just like, oh, I need to learn this. So, uh, yeah, it was drumming first. And it was always just, like I say, I was always, always in bands for as long as I can remember. And then, yeah, I, I, I'm sort of too much of a an attention seeker to be a drummer. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It, all, it made more sense for me to be singing and a, a front man. And I do enjoy playing the drums, but I definitely enjoy being up the front a lot more um so yeah it just and then like i say i was in a couple of bands singing and they just sort of felt like i say fell apart because you know people wanted different things from their life and and i just wanted to do music all the time and i put all my my heart and my soul into it and then some people started dropping off and it was just it's really disappointing when that happens when you think you've got something really good with the band and it and it just disintegrates um so then, and then, so I started doing a little bit of busking, um, maybe about five years ago, and then, I, and then I quit my job and did busking full time for a year, and then just got into gigging. So I've been self-employed for like five years now, just doing gigs. Wow. Um, yeah, and then obviously it all, it all went to pieces. I was really hopeful in, in the first lockdown. I thought, oh, it won't be long. Yeah, I'll be back to, back to gigging this year. And then it was like, oh, it's been six months. You know, come up to Christmas, no gigs, and it's just. Um, and I can't wait to get back out and uh, back gigging. Right. So speak, since you mentioned your love of gigs, mm-hmm. what's one of the main things you miss about it? Because I could obviously imagine would be the crowds, but yeah, yeah. there's probably some other things as well in there. So like, what are the things you miss? Yeah, the crowds is a big one. And it's just, it's just playing with the band. There's, it's, there's like no other, there's no other feeling like it in the world. You just go to an, another place, another plane of existence. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. It's just that feeling that I get playing with the band especially in front of a nice full room and people are into it and feeling it and everyone's just vibing that's just there is no better feeling yeah, especially that... when playing your songs as well i do like playing covers in pubs and stuff but you you like background music there i like playing with the band i like playing my songs you know that's that's the best feeling i reckon playing your own songs right so obviously being an independent musician there's like there's not many other ways for you to make income or so and it can be quite tough sometimes so i'm wondering how would you just generally describe the journey you'd go on as an independent musician like if you had to do if like your friend or little cousin came to you and asked i want to do this like Mm -hmm. independently how do i go about it how would you describe it uh you've just got to be persistent in in everything you do you know when if you if you're trying to get gigs or you're trying to get your your songs heard it's it's, it'd be easy to get disheartened from by people just either ignoring you or turning you down or whatever, but you've just got to be thick skinned and persistent, man. You just, you can't stop, you know, can't stop sending out messages, trying to get gigs, sending out your songs. Just, you've got to just keep, keep going. Cause it is, it can be easy to get disheartened sometimes, especially when you've been doing it for, I've been doing it for a, a long time now, you know what I mean? And it's, I've done some cool things, but not really hit the, the heights of success and you start to get a little bit older and you start to think, oh, is this ever going to really happen for me? Or what even is making it, you know what I mean? What what are the parameters of success? Um, so you just got to be persistent and just stay true to yourself. You've just got to make music because I make music because I love it, you know what I mean? It, it, the success and uh, a bit of, um, you know, yes, a bit, a bit of success would be nice, but I don't think I will ever stop making music do it. I don't know what uh, capacity it will be in as my life progresses, but I will always make music. Yeah. 
Fair enough. I, actually, funnily enough, I see a lot of parallels in that with obviously my journey as mm-hmm. a student journalist, where like it is absolutely terrifying to DM someone and be like, hey, I need you for an interview and I'm a student. And it's like, I don't have this big platform. I'm not yeah. established. Yeah. But then obviously when you get that one opportunity, you have to always try your best to just knock out the park. Sure, yeah, sure. So, <clears throat> and a lot of people start these journeys at very different times of their life in mm-hmm making it is a subjective thing for some people it is the money and the fame the acclaim for other people it's knowing that they can look back on their life knowing that they just have a body of work that they can be remembered for yeah yeah definitely yeah I agree so with that. so i do see a lot of parallels and um obviously there hasn't been a whole lot of government back support as previously mentioned so what would you wish if if you could send a letter to a prime minister or someone in the opposition of power to help out like musicians and the events industry as a whole what would you say what would be like your main things mm. that is a tough one um because i've actually had a couple of income support because i've been self-employed i had a couple of income support things which have really helped me out and i am working again now uh, just to find a way to get to get gigs back on again i don't know if it was like if it'd be outdoor ones first or back to you know, now there's rapid testing. Maybe you could get, if you have music festivals or gigs where you could be rapidly tested. On your, say you do a test on your phone, I don't know, 20 minutes before you go to the venue and you're then allowed in the venue or something. I know that that is in the pipeline. Um, yeah, just a way to get gigs back on <laughs> as soon as possible, man, because that is, that is what I miss the most. Yeah, I, like even I miss just as a student, I just miss being able to go to the pub, really, like, yeah. and just those kind of small things. And... I do feel like the government is trying to eventually going to get around to figuring out what they're going to do with gigs. I'm pretty sure they're thinking about outdoor gigs, like yeah. social distance and with masks, of course, because we won't like New Zealand, but yeah, um, yeah. you know, at least they're trying now, but I do really, I do really feel like some of the like propaganda they spread early on kind of rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Like how did it make you feel when you, when some of the first posters and promotional packages for retraining and getting a new job, like essentially telling people in the creative or entertainment industry, like we're not going to support you. Yeah. How did that make you feel? Uh, it's tough, man. It, it was really tough. And it's, I think it was a, uh, it was a struggle with identity. You know what I mean? My identity was full-time musician before. And then once that's sort of taken away, you, I mean, you have to roll with the punches in life, don't you? You've, you've got to keep adapting. Um, so it was it was tough. Um, but, yeah, like I say, I think you, you do have to roll with the punches and you do have to adapt. I mean, it's, it's, n- it's not fun being told you have to retrain, but what is the what is the alternative? You don't, there, there is no real alternative at the minute, is there? So um, yeah. I think it will, it will get back to it. But, like I say, ad- identity was the thing that I struggled with the most because it was like if I'm not g- gigging full-time, then who, who am I really? So I'd sort of lost a part of myself. But you've got to roll with the punches in life, haven't you? You've got to keep adapting, and it's just the way it is. Yeah, that does sound quite hard. I couldn't imagine being a musician and having that, because obviously, well, journalism, that's an industry that's always going to be there. You're going to yeah. need someone to cover the news. But like, even for me as a student, having to, well, not record things in person, having to do interviews by Zoom and yeah. stuff like that. But at the same time, you do learn new skills in a way. Yeah, like, yeah absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. You do have to learn just to be able to, like, develop that thick skin, like you said, or to just know how to compose yourself in a message or just get yourself out there, Yeah, yeah basically. Yeah. Definitely, So yeah. now back to more music-focused things. Um, what musicians would you say inspired you? Like, who are the people, if you had to name, like, five or six or um, however many, who inspired you? So way back in the day, originally, I was a proper metalhead when I was a kid. So I used to absolutely love Metallica. It was my first, my first band love with Metallica, definitely. Um, and then I saw them, I'd seen them a few times, but I was at Glastonbury a few years ago when they headlined. And obviously it's not really a metal music festival, is uh, Glastonbury. So yeah. it was, I think it was a bit left field for most people. And I was just in my absolute element. I knew every, every word to every song. Um, <laughs> So yeah, originally Metallica, but more recently, just I really like um, some singer-songwriters. There's a guy called uh, an old American folk singer called uh, Loudon Wainwright, uh, and he is just my absolute hero because just the the body of work that he's actually created. He's, he's got like 20, 25 albums or something, and it, it's not all it's not all brilliant, but there are some absolute pearls, and that, that just I want to be like that, you know, just constantly creating and just constantly keep working. So. 
Uh, Loud and Wainwright, definitely. I really like uh, this guy Fink. He's called. Um, uh, who else? Loud and Wainwright, Fink, uh, Tom Waits, Nick Cave, people like that. I kind of like the older singer-songwriters, the that kind of thing. So yeah, if I if I had to say five, I'd say Metallica, Nick Cave, Tom Waits, Loud and Wainwright, Fink. I'd say yeah. Awesome. That sounds like an incredible list of people. Yeah. And okay, what was my what was my other question? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> You can tell this is my first time. That's all right. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> um, oh wow, I've that's really right. gone. I've really gone blank. I must apologize. Well, um, I, all right. Well, I do think that um, COVID, the the music industry is obviously changing um, because obviously most bands made most of the money from touring and merchandise and all that's gone out the window now. So I do think that uh, the music industry is changing and is evolving a little bit. It's definitely made me um, take more of a look at things like my social media presence and my Spotify and all, you know what I mean? I've got all of that in order, which I, I didn't have before. It was just, I was just concentrating on writing the songs and, and gigging. Whereas now I, I am much more in touch with my online presence and, and getting my songs out there a little bit more. And you know, my, my streams on Spotify are not high by any means, but they're definitely creeping up as I'm putting a little bit more time into it. And I'm definitely trying to learn more about the industry um, than I knew before. Yeah. Yeah. Because I would say that I think every creative industry has changed due to COVID because now everyone's had to think there's got to be multiple streams of income. You can't just rely on the one thing that you enjoy doing the most. But also having that presence on the online platforms like the Spotify's and obviously Instagram and Snapchat and X, all those kind of things. Yeah. It really does help get you out there. Like, hell, yeah. I have a podcast and seeing that, like the numbers aren't great on that as well, but realizing the importance of having the description or having the putting the extra effort in the timestamps and stuff like that yeah yeah yeah. it shows how much how much better it can boost you and like definitely yeah and like you said like i'm the same my my streams are not super high but they like i say they're going in the right direction and i think again consistency is just is key isn't it if you're putting that one song out every six to twelve months that's not going to be enough and i've got so much material locked, sort of locked and loaded ready to go that i'm hoping over the next 12 months to two years i'm just going to be putting out material all the time and i'm hoping you know with this new knowledge and that i'm always learning i'm hoping my my online presence and my streams and everything are gonna keep climbing that's my hope yeah i hope so because i've heard some of your songs and even though your type of music isn't usually what i'd listen to because i'm really into my rap music and stuff mm -hmm. like that like your music is genuinely like phenomenal like oh, i can't thank like, you very much i couldn't not i couldn't not see you like gaining a like a large fan base of some yeah. kind oh thanks that's very nice of you I, I hope so i hope so i've been i've been doing it for a long time and it feels like it's like i say it's it can be disheartening and, and it's difficult sometimes just to keep going because it's you don't really know what the end game is you know when i when i was working before i went self-employed it's like the goal was be a full-time musician and it was like that was achievable and i could do that and then once i achieved that it was sort of like ah, I don't really know what the don't really know what the end game is here. I don't really know what I'm working towards. But since this lockdown, especially, I've started setting myself, you know, small goals now. You know, like trying to hit a hundred followers on Spotify or trying to get a thousand streams on one of my songs. You know what I mean? It's it's about having small, manageable goals that you can work towards. And I, I think that's now with this lockdown, especially, I've got a little bit more time. And uh, setting myself these little goals does seem to be helping and, and, and making a bit of a difference. Yeah, okay. So you mentioned, obviously, be, like being from around Leeds. How would you describe the music scene from there? Oh, Leeds is, is teeming. There's, there's so much music in Leeds. It's, uh, it's just that it's everywhere. I've got so many friends in bands in Leeds as well. And, and it's, yeah, it's just teeming. There's always good uh, music. And... Again, another thing this lockdown has helped me, as I've started to try and uh, build my social media presence, it's like then you go on and you start looking at lo other local bands and stuff. Uh, and then that helps you connect with people. And so I think I'm more sort of connected now than I think I have ever been because I've started reaching out to other bands and, and you know, listening, actually taking the time to listen to local music and stuff. Because if I don't listen to local music, I can't really expect anyone to listen to my <laughs> local music so i'm trying to be a bit more uh, involved in the local scene i hear that so with this lo with this lockdown it's forced a lot of creatives to um connect and find unique ways to come together to 
still live their dream essentially so what's been some of your experiences in lockdown when it comes to finding people to help you with covering a song or just collaborating with people generally uh, I think, like I say, I've I've collaborated with people that I haven't really collaborated with before. I've got a friend who runs a recording studio in Leeds, and uh, I used to work there for a while. But we've not really done any recording together before. We've maybe done one or two tracks. But obviously his studio has been closed, and he was just looking for something to do. So we would actually did quite a few tunes in lockdown one. Just remotely, I recorded all my parts in my little studio, and then he did a lot of his parts in his studio. So that was really good to get... Because usually he'd be really busy as well, and, and we won't get the chance to do that. So it was nice that we both had the chance to come together and 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 make some some new tunes. Um, great. And um, probably my final question, or one of my final questions, what's been one of your favorite tracks you've released so far? Ah, see, it's I I always find that the one I've recently put out, I think that yeah, this is the best one I've ever, and then. You know, a few months, a year goes by and you go back and listen to it and you think, oh, actually, I would do this differently now or I would do this differently. Um, a few of my personal favorite ones uh, off my last EP, which is like two years old now, uh, is a song called Antigua, which that is one of my favorite songs I've ever written because I just love the lyrics and they just sort of came out all, all in one go in a big, a big, quite long and wordy. But I think that's one of my, that's one of my favorite ones. Um, that... It's called When This Is Over is another one. That's one I did with my friend in lockdown one. Uh, and that was another one that just sort of just came out in like 20 minutes. Sometimes it takes like six months to write a song. But that one just sort of came out of me all at once. Uh, and I think people really connected with that one as well because it was about lockdown. And you know what I mean? It's, it was just about looking forward to better times. And that was like, it got 15,000 views on Facebook, which is the most of, out of any of my songs. Um, wow. And people really seem to connect with that one. So that was another one of my favourites. Um, and I've got a tune coming out next Friday, which I've been sat on for a while. Uh, but I think that's one of my favourites as well. Because I just love lyrics. You know, when I'm listening to music, lyrics is what is what gets me. I like little lines here and there. and just So the favourite songs that I've written are the ones where I think the lyrics are really strong. So, yeah. That's awesome. And probably my final question would be, what can we look forward to from you in the future? Like, if someone was to look up Liam Sullivan in, like, a month from now, what could they expect to see or hear uh, just, about? Just content, much more content than I've been doing recently. Like I say, I've been maybe putting out one song every six months to a year or whatever, but I've got about six or seven songs in the bag finished. So, And I've got loads of little videos and stuff. And another thing that lockdown's taught me, I've got pretty good at video editing and I've got a camera and stuff. So... Um, I think just a lot more content, a lot more songs and a lot more content is my is my plan for the next 12 months to really put some time and effort into just consistent content and consistent releases. Awesome. I'm sure you will. I have absolutely no doubt in that. You seem like a very dedicated, focused man. And obviously, you're an incredibly talented musician, first thank and you. foremost. So I look forward to just hearing good things about you, man. And thank uh -huh. you for your time. No problem. Yeah, thanks very much. I've enjoyed it.